Nigerian immigrants joined the UFC to free his innocent dad from prison. This is an unbelievable story. And this is the first time really I ever talked about it. This dude right here ain't nothing to play with. My father's been incarcerated since 2009. Well, I'm be dead. So he got sentenced when he did no crime? How do you justify giving him that much in time? Wait till I see you next time, Marty Fake Newsman! You're dead! You're dead! Have you talked about this before? This is the first time I've ever talked about it. Tell us what happened. That's the crazy shit. It was out of the blue. Early in the morning, I saw SWAT team in my house. Bang in the dog. Police department, third one! Open the door! Police department, third one! Open the door! Get it. I came down, I said, what's going on? I said, they're taking me downtown. I said, for what? Operation Easy Rider led to the arrest of Mohammed Usman this morning in Dallas, Texas. And the worst part is, Kamaru can't even be there to help him. It was the day that I was actually flying back home for like summer break, walking into the airport and I get a call. And it's my mom and she's just frantic. She's screaming, she's crying on the phone. What's going on, calm down, tell me what's going on. She's like, they came, they took him, they took him. I just remember my heart sinking in my chest. That's pretty much when everything started is, how do we begin to fight this case? But was his father, Mohammed, really innocent? I didn't physically see my dad until I was four years old, but I knew who my dad was. I knew that I had a dad that loved me, cared about me. See, my dad wasn't around a lot when we were uh, small because he was in the army in America. And so my mom is there with three boys. Right. So she had to kind of raise us in, in Africa by herself for the most part. I mean, struggling, there's no jobs. We had to go to the well to get water. Electricity was rare, that's a scarce thing. Going up, I got to see every level of hustle. My mom was a teacher. My mom owned a store. We would walk about two, three miles with her every morning and try to sell clothes for us to eat that night. And on top of it, raising three boys, rowdy boys. We were a team, you know, we were getting fights. You didn't fight one of us. You fought one, you had to fight all three. Mohammed finally comes back home with one thing in mind, the American dream. There was a lot of opportunities here that were not open to my keys back in Nigeria. He truly wanted a better life for us, so. How old were you when you came here? Eight years old. Crazy thing is, the day we landed was one of the first times it snowed in Texas. And I'm like, what, what is this white stuff? And we tug out the car, we, we, trying to, <laughs> we trying to see what this is. We lived in a one bedroom apartment. It was my mom, my dad, three boys. And it was hard to adjust to the school system. Kids are mean. We're Americans. Go back to your country. Like, I always heard that growing up. I remember there was a guy, he sat behind me, tried to bully me. People started telling me, yo, he's on the wrestling team. So now I was a little afraid because, because I didn't know how to defend myself and he was on the wrestling team. I felt so powerless at that moment to where I said, you know what? No, I'm gonna change it. The next year I didn't go out for football. I went straight to wrestling. And it was the most difficult thing that I've ever done in my life. But for some reason, I kept showing up. Because when you told me about the wrestling, really, I didn't like it. Coming from an immigrant family, right. especially an African family, there's certain career fields that you were going to be able to go into. Go and become a doctor. You're going to be a pharmacist, an engineer. And I'm like, no, I want to I wanna, I wanna do this wrestling thing. No. Who's wrestling? No. Uh -uh. Go to your room. I'm like, OK, they, they're not going to understand this. And there's no way they're going to let me do this. I lied to them the first couple of years that I was wrestling. I didn't <laughs> tell them that. After working several years as a pharmacist, Mohammed makes a decision that will change the course of his life forever. When I got into the ambulance business, I didn't know much about the business. I'm a pharmacist. He starts a company and delegates the billing to an external firm. He didn't really do his research well enough on the guys that he hired. He put people in charge that didn't run it the right way. The firm he hired committed fraud. They put it all under investigation. A civil investigation is long. Basically shutting down my business. After a while, they, they come back and they say, all right, we'll give you your stuff back. Like, we didn't really see anything. They drop the investigation and settle with Mohammed. He even signs an NDA. So I thought everything was over. Mohammed decides to shut down his business and move on to something else. So it was two years after. During that time, the billing firm gets caught doing the same thing in other businesses. So they get caught. Now, they're like, okay, we want that guy. The criminal code is so vast. If the feds really want you, they could find something. They negotiate less jail time with the prosecution in exchange for ratting out Mohammed. Those people, you know, they would they would rat out their own mother to get a lower sentence. Then all of a sudden, he said that was civil. 
Now it's criminal. Everything falls back on one person. The owner. They offered him a deal. Yeah, they offered him a plea deal. And he said, no, I didn't do shit wrong. Why would I take that deal? And he said, I'm not going to, you know, take anything. I'm going to go to trial. I'm going to go to court. We'll go to court with this. Justice system is going to do what they're supposed to do. Mohammed wants to hire a lawyer, but he can't. We're going to freeze all your accounts. You can't really fight the case. All his funds are frozen. He's broke. And now your family's left with nothing. How much justice can you afford? You had to take a court-appointed attorney. They're overworked and they're underpaid. You can't fight. So 15 years, I looked at the judge, looked at my family. <sighs> there was not much I could do. And. What was going through your mind? It's like a dead man walking. I cried, my wife cried, my kids cried. It was very difficult. They got the handcuffs and everything, so I was in a hurry, so it's like, well, this is it. Just took me out of their life. And... and I have to put myself in his reality that he has to go into this, into a cell. I didn't even know what to do then. I just remember feeling so powerless. Some murderers get less time than that. He didn't kill anybody. When these guy, hedge fund guys found guilty for manipulating these markets for billions, you give him six months house arrest. Kamaru wants to quit school and come back home to help his mother out. How do we leave school and come back home to help the family? But his father refuses. This is not the end of the world. It should forge ahead. Do the best they can. Man, I got to succeed at all costs. It grew the chip that was on my shoulder. Your son, he announces that he wants to become an MMA fighter. How did you react to that? I knew I was going to give this a shot, but this would have been a lot difficult mm -hmm. had he not given his blessing to do it. I had to go have a conversation with him about he it. He decides to visit his father in prison to ask for his blessing. I want to start fighting. Fighting, you want people to hurt you? Dad, this is what I like to do. I said, for what? Why you want to do this? You shouldn't do that. Why? So I showed him the clips of me sparring. I said, well, behind the glass, I told him, if that's what you want to do, you got my blessings. As human beings, when we feel pain and we feel certain things, what do we do? We try to run away from it. We try to mask the pain. We try to hide from the pain. Sometimes you have to walk into the fire and you realize it's really not as hot as you think it is. The fires of hard work and discipline, you forged a champion. What he doesn't know is his father watches every fight from prison. But he can only watch the fights that are on cable not the pay-per-views. Kamaru never took a pay-per-view fight. So his father can keep watching. The first fight that Kamaru had was very nerve-wracking for me. What was that? Was that his foot? I just got kicked in the face. This is really what my son is getting into. These fights were the highlights while I was in prison. Inmates would come meet me, they would come tell me, say, hey, your son is going to be a champion one day. And through those years, Kamaru has a daughter, Samira, and his brother Mohammed has a son, Nash. Joy finds its way back into the Usman family. Hello? Kamaru. Yes, yeah, me. The number one. Pound for pound. Best in the world. Best in the world. Yeah, yeah, it's me. You familiar with my Patreon? Yeah. In exchange for your support, you get your name in the credits. Yeah. Exclusive access to video breakdowns. Yeah. Q&As. Yeah. My Discord community. Yeah. Are you in? Hello? Hello, darkness, my old friend. After years of hard work, Kamaru finally gets his title shot against one of the greatest welterweights of all time. Come on, I've been doing this before it was legal. 
I've been doing this in the streets my whole life. Beating Wonder Boy, smashing Darren Till, beating Damian Maya, knocking out Robbie Lawler to win the title. He's a freak of nature. I would kick your ass and just wrestle flat out. There. I don't think and so. If, when it come down to striking, I would knock you out flat out. Another second. I don't think so. When it come right. down to grappling, I would break your arm flat out. If Tyron beats Usmanos, like there's a real good argument for him being number one of all time. Everybody knew he was gonna fight for the world title, but in fucking 18 was it was on pay per view. So his father is left in the dark. Kamaru is on his own. It's time for me to go out and make them proud now. When he won the belts, I cried. I limped to the back. While I limped to the back, my brother was on the phone here. The joy that he felt, I could feel it all the way through the phone. I just couldn't control it. I just let, I just let go, and I just can't help but cry. It's okay. It's so good, baby. It's so good. That's crazy, right? It makes me cry. There's something in the air over here. What's going on? <laughs> That's your time. And keep on working, because there's phone club for you. And you take it to us. But Kamaru pays a big price to carry that belt. My knees. Oh my God, my knees. A couple of times, I cried physically cry because I can I'm like man my career's just starting and I can't even walk you had a hernia and a broken foot for yeah, that fight that yeah. is crazy you know I got this freaking drain coming out of me right now. oh shit that look at that drain. and then the Usman family faces the worst nightmare of all talk about your uh, your kid that passed away um at only two years old Muhammad's son Nash drowns in a pool. Can't even really explain it, you know. I'm still kind of in shock. My son was the reason I started fighting. And uh, he's the reason that I'm here now. And uh, there's no getting around it. It's a part of what I am now. I hurt every day of my life. I'm hurting sitting up here right now talking about it, but. Uh, he will be my motivation until my last day. I know he wants me to have a good life. He wants me to take care of my kids. Don't quit, don't quit on your life and uh, just keep going. As Kamaru is trying to heal up, there is someone out there whose career has progressed just as successfully. Through the years, that man has become the most dangerous threat to Kamaru, his greatest nemesis. And without a doubt, one of the most extraordinary Americans to have ever existed. Greetings, nerds and virgins. America's champ is back. Call me chaos. It's morphin time. Box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. He is the one. Give him the three piece with the soda. Brazil, you're a dog. All you feel the end is up. I got one thing to say. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm gonna be watching Colby. I'm a big fan of Colby. He's a winner, he's a champ, and he's tough. Colby, Colby. Oh my God. Good luck, champ. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mr. President. Donald Trump's favorite fighter, fighter. America's championship. This is raw American steel. I got the president of the United States. Let's you get a call from the president? That's right, you're a loser. Who do you get a but call from? You. you get a call from freaking your little tribe. They give you some smoke signals for you. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't bring the bed sheets back out. Your mom used to dress you up in bed sheets. What happened to those? I'm a grown ass man. Don't can talk to me like that. Does that not like boil your blood or like how do you block that out? I used to be sensitive about that. Hey, try get knocked out Saturday night, scrub! Wait till I see you next time, Marty Fake Newsman! You're dead! You're dead! We only talk on Twitter. We don't talk we don't talk in person, we talk on Twitter. Now we in person, you can't talk. What's up with all that shit you was talking online? I'm standing in front of you. Talk. And Whitaker was standing next to him. And Whitaker does one of these joint like look around. This dude talking to, uh, and then security walks up. What? Say something. Say something. Say something. This was after 
the Connor Khabib's bus the situation. Bro. Yes. Drama show, big drama show. <laughs> but please don't broke bus. I'm in front of you. Talk that shit you want to talk on Twitter. Kamaru, is that a possibility? It's a possibility tonight. Let's do it you tonight. Let's do it right now. Let's go, let's go, right, go right, right now. And this guy said a lot of things that were very, very personal. Is your daddy the jailbird coming on Saturday night? I got a hook up with law enforcement. If you want me to call his parole officer, I'll make sure he come on Saturday night. I let my mom watch the interviews and things like that, and she doesn't necessarily love it. so bad for me. Could you please do that? Think about that. She's got a cheating ass son, and she's got a scammer ass husband. That must be shitty in that household. I'm like, oh, Kamaru, why? Very best welterweight title fights ever. Like you, there's came out guns blazing. the story gets a bit meta. After he beats Kobe, Kamaru gets invited to the Joe Rogan experience. The same podcast I've been playing in this video. This podcast alone, you talking about this, could very well bring someone forward that wants to help you with the appeal. When did you first hear about the case? I was working out, listening to Joe Rogan experience, you know, I had my headphones on, and then, you know, I heard Kamaru you know, start to tell the story about his dad. And really, I could, I could feel the hurt in Kamaru's heart when he talked. And that's, that's really what touched me. How did you get him released? This is the first ever case that I got involved with, First Step Act. The First Step Act is intended to do two things. Cut unnecessarily long federal sentences and improve conditions in prisons. It came about through President Trump and Kim Kardashian, like, those two people get together, it's, I mean, it's, it's like, I was mind blown. <laughs> he was the one who wrote those final letters and, and made some of those final calls. That's incredible. And, and it's like, that's incredible. And after all these years, Kamaru wishes only one more thing. The big thing to me that would mean so much to me is, is to have my dad front and center for my fight. Having my dad come into the cage and, and put that belt around me. And for the first time, you go to watch your son fight. Watching my son was the greatest thing. I mean, that was something, like, you know what? That's the best day of my life, actually. My 
love that. I love that. Thanks for watching everybody, if you want to know more about the story, I'll be releasing my commentary on Patreon, so make sure you check out the link in the description. Take care everybody and I'll see you in the next one.